okay so we've heard a lot about the day before over this last week it's a game that finally released after i don't know if anticipation is the right word to use but there's been a lot of interest in this game over this past year people wondering if it was actually going to release and it finally released this past week and is now being considered one of the biggest scams in video game history so despite all the chaos and news i've heard about this game i've actually seen no gameplay of it i don't really know what it is about this game that caused it to be so infamously bad so let's check out this uh this was an ign review let's check it out together just so we can see why exactly this game is so infamous for all the wrong reasons <laughs> this guy is immediately feeling shame he was ready to come up to this guy for a hot snack and then realized he underestimated the one true counter to zombies a bench with a bag on it before we get started a quick note from the editor here just four days after its early access release the day before was removed from sale on steam and the developer announced it was shutting down the servers remain up for now four days it was on the market for four days as early access and now it's gone four days oh, for anyone who bought it but since our reviewer went to the trouble of playing it it seems only right that you get to see what he thought while it lasted now on i'm getting division kind of vibes from this like the hub world in division you know what i mean longer than the twitch tos change they put just as much effort into both with the review five long years that's how long the now defunct developer of Fantastic supposedly spent assembling the day before. They spent five years on this game only to be on the market for four days. And this is a current gen title? Look at it. it, it. This wholly disappointing on. This looks like The Last of Us. I know I said Division earlier, but now I'm getting kind of Last of Us vibes from this. Is this like. Did they take inspiration from any and every other game on the market and try to make like a smorgasbord of it? Is that what we're getting into here? Online zombie survival shooter contains essentially nothing of what was originally promised over the years leading up to its disastrous early access release. I have no not idea what was promised. Is it not an MMO, but it hardly passes as a survival shooter at all. Wait, this was going to be this was going to be an MMO? This was intended to be like a fully multiplayer. I thought it was like a single player game. It's supposed to be an MMO. So was the wait. So when this launched, were there like a subscription services? Like for the people who had it for the four days, did they have to buy uh, like a subscription fee to play it? Like kind of like WoW or something? No. Okay, but was there an optional one? Cause I think like Elder Scrolls Online, you can play it for free but there is a subscription service to get extra stuff if you want it. You'd have to see the original trailers to see what their ambitions were. If someone can find that for me, I'll check it after this. In the handful of hours I managed to spend with it before it went belly up, I ran into such severe performance issues on my GeForce RTX 4070 Ti and Ryzen 3900X equipped PC that it felt like it would have been a waste of time to continue. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on jump physics i and ryzen 3900x equipped pc that it felt like it would have been a waste of time to continue anyway <laughs> that is even if the running around the day before is quite it's so empty there's nothing there is there supposed to be like swarms of enemies in the streets there's a bunch of youtube videos prior to it coming out about this that's what i'm saying like i I think I had heard the name over the last year, but I didn't know anything about it until it released. And now it's just like everywhere. Questionably designed city collecting loot was any fun to begin with. Who's making the sound? There's no zombie. Is, is. Who? Oh, there's someone behind them. This entire 
sitting, there's one zombie. You wake up in the ramshackle survivor camp of a New York inspired metropolis filled with questionable decals that look precariously similar to real world businesses. It's unclear where the zombies are coming from or why you should care, and the whole thing might be forgivable if it was framed as a parody, but unfortunately, the generic survivors of this unimaginative world seem to take its zombie outbreak seriously. I'm getting Bethesda vibes from this conversation. The very much. I mean, granted, he at least has the decency to not make the weird eye contact. He's slightly looking down here, but I'm getting Bethesda conversation vibes here. When the aggressive infected individuals took to the streets, it only took a couple of weeks for New Fortune City to completely fall. After a decently paced tutorial, the day before comes up short on even the most basic features one would expect in a survival game. Gone are the dynamic environments and tight firefights shown off in its now mysteriously absent trailers. That was the most polite zombie I've ever seen. He snuck up on the guy, went for an attack, realized player wasn't ready and backed off to give him some personal space. This is a Canadian zombie. This takes place in, Can in Canadiaville, trust me. Instead, you'll mostly spend your time running around a static cityscape that looks keep, pretty- Keep going, hold on. Do you think this was like the motto in the developer studio for the last five years? Keep going, just keep going, guys. Just keep going for it. It'll be good in the end. It'll be good. Keep going, keep going. Mm -mm. I'm running around a static cityscape that looks pretty at first glance, but offers absolutely no depth. You might find a zombie or two while scavenging for loot, but they rarely pose any threat. <laughs> what shocked me the most about the day before was the notable absence of- It even, this even feels like Joel. Like, I understand like, Scavenger with a backpack isn't a unique design to The Last of Us, but for some reason, I, I, I just keep feeling like they looked at The Last of Us for so much of their inspiration between that and The Division. Of like almost any UI. Sure, there's a touch screen display for your quests, but you can only track one at a time. There's also a clunky makeshift map, but you're a sitting duck while- It's so tiny. And I'm looking at it. The inventory screen is also bare bones. And this reminds me of what's that game escape from tarkov i only played it a little bit but this feels like it was ripped right out of escape from tarkov i never played daisy so i i can't comment on that and even if you manage to find yourself in the same squad with other players it's almost impossible to figure out where they are or even if they're still on your team tarkov is more complex than that screen well i i feel like they're kind of taking inspiration from a lot of different games, but doing the bare bones basic minimum. Not only is there no multiplayer menu, there is no voice chat either. There's no multiplayer menu for a game that's supposed to be an MMO. The cracks are starting to form here. You can communicate with your party in a rudimentary in-game chat window, but even getting that to work is a pain. I'd have a more enjoyable time actually hiding under a dumpster surrounded by zombies like Glenn from The Walking Dead. I was literally just going to say like Glenn from The Walking Dead. One of like the big times where people got angry because they, what was it, bait and switch? Until a few episodes later. Hmm. Then waiting for the day before his multiplayer to work right. Since there isn't much guidance at all, I had to find out the hard way that the day- Do you see that stuttering? as he's running watch the character model then waiting for the day before his multiplayer to work right since there isn't much guidance at like all, right there I had to find out the hard way it that the day so much simply not telling me how to do certain things like melee. so that's the company that made it f f fantastic is what it's supposed to be fantastic coffee like combat or setting up camp in the alleged open world it literally doesn't have those features at all that's right if you find yourself running around without a gun for some reason, good luck outrunning all these absolutely brainless zombies because your hands and feet are useless. Wait, you can't melee? So you just jog along? The day before is not an MMO or even an open world, despite claims from its developer that it would be both of those things. Instead, it's fundamentally an extraction shooter with only one goal, sluggishly run around the mostly empty city grab some loot and get to one of the extraction points. 
it's the division the uh, I, I only played division one but like the extraction multiplayer mode what was it dark zone whatever it was called this is just the division just worse before you die the only things you carry over between runs are any gear you manage to take with you as well as any currency you save up by selling the scraps of loot back to base if you somehow die before making it home which is the norm thanks to an unrestricted free-for-all pvp system you lose everything you had on your body meaning you'll often progress backward as your currency dwindles that currency can be spent on new items at the main outpost woodbury which serves as the headquarters for your daily operations Oh, that pop in a few NPCs that spout bland set dressing dialogue and a storage area for your loose gear and money. How are you doing? Look, I keep comparing it to The Last of Us. They even have Abby in this game. I rest my case. Area for your loose gear and money. How are you doing? I'd like to buy a golf club, please. Put your things in here. It's cool that it's also populated by other players between loot runs, and it's great that you can team up with anyone while you're in this hub. It's significantly less cool, however, that the hub area's NPCs, the only NPCs in the day before, mind you, are so dryly written and unenthusiastically voice acted that they sound like they could be the poor result of a generative AI. For example, if you frequently carry a heavy backpack, over time you'll be able to carry even more items. It's difficult. Well, thank you, Captain Obvious. If you increase your carry stash, you will be able to carry more items. I have a question. What the hell were these devs doing for five years? What were you guys doing? Difficult to forgive that on its own, but it's e that shitty AI. Well, this is why every time I read that more studios, gaming, film, TV, whatever, want to create more with AI. You know, like the video game crash of whenever before like nintendo kind of revived video games if all these studios and companies go down the, the the route of ai generated content we're gonna be in for another crash because it's so lifeless there's no there's no soul there's no life behind it it's just computer programming content and it's gonna be atrocious and no one is going to watch it or play it even harder still when you realize there's genuinely no story content after the first 30 or so minutes it takes to complete the tutorial. There's also no clear reason to do any of its procedurally generated quests, which have you looting random items for an NPC back at camp, other than to earn a meager amount of extra currency. Oh, I love fetch quests. Which makes it suck even more that you can only take on one at a time. The day before takes place almost entirely outdoors I, during I the day. I can't get over how deserted no it is. Weather effects to shake things up. The landscape of New Fortune City is a largely static zone with limited space, where the most exciting thing you'll find is an occasional container with one or two pieces of junk loot. Despite that, the frame... How can you have this massive city with nothing in it, both in terms of enemies, places to explore, loot? Right, still struggle to remain stable on my mid No, fra no consistent frame rate. And the constant bugs and stuttering made it downright annoying to play it at all. There are essentially no unique zombie encounters or bosses either, and very little in the way of landmarks or special areas containing different types of loot. At for respect. The few there are that seem like they should house unique gear aren't very good at it. Spots like a police station armory, for example, are generally empty and usually only serve to make excellent traps for other more coordinated bands of players to gank you for all of your hard earned scrap. So is there like PVP in it then where you steal each other's loot? Is that what they're referring to? I mean, for all six people that were playing this game before it got removed. What would you run into other people out in the wild? Or was it just you and your friends who you suckered into buying this game playing against the one or two zombies that you'll encounter per hour? Surviving all the way to extraction is frustratingly difficult on higher population servers, even with a squad by your side, okay, thanks so to yes. a limited number of extraction points on the map, all of which are situated next to choke points constantly abused by more powerful groups of players. Look how bad that is. Look how much it stutters. Difficult on higher population servers, even with a squad by your side, 
thanks to a limited number of extraction points on the map. It just All of which crawls. Are situated next to choke points, constantly abused by more powerful groups of players. Oh, that's so bad. Oh, not only thanks. is this unfair and unfun on its own, there's currently an unfixed currency duplication glitch, which means you can bet most of those other players are cheating to get high powered armor and weapons. I have a suspicion you won't have to worry about it since you can't even play this game anymore. I had some bad news. This bug or cheat probably will not be patched. Now that fantastic is no more, the hopes of that ever getting fixed are slim to none. But hey, the sliver of good news here is at least there's a surprisingly decent variety of weapons. They fix it. They just deleted the game. To scope sniper rifles. Problem in solved. All, there are probably about 14 or so options available at the weapon dealer in town. But the catch is that you'll struggle to afford anything packing a real pun. Again, this just reminds me of simplified Tarkov. This game is just a collection of every other game on the market. Weapons also handle reasonably Minus soul well, and character. their cheap and underwhelming sound design leaves a lot to be desired. The bigger your backpack, the more loot you can carry. But just like everything else in your inventory, you'll lose your backpack as soon as you die. This sucks because backpacks are relatively expensive to replace, and you essentially need one in order to haul anything worthwhile back from a run. If you're lucky, okay. you might be able to find one on another player's corpse, but it's more likely you'll be unprepared to fight anyone if you're low on cash. The Day Before is easily one of the worst games I have ever played, to the point where I'm afraid to continue running it on my PC. Sure, you could say there are the bones of something coherent here, but even those bones feel splintered and brittle. Its map is lifeless, its enemies are idiotic, its PvP is an exploitable mess, its story is pointless, and its progression is downright infuriating. While the now defunct developer Fantastic said it wasn't done, certain baseline standards have been established in the year. Wasn't done? Did you even start? Look at this thing. What do you mean it wasn't done? Is it an early access? Yeah, and it's going to be an early access forever. Years since early access became a thing, and this game met none of them. The many mysterious questions around the day before his development will likely go unanswered now that the curtain has fallen, leaving the player base to fend for itself until the servers are inevitably shut down for good. And if you didn't manage to try it firsthand, you can count yourself as one of the lucky ones. One. No, the score graphic didn't get stuck. That's a one out of 10, folks. I can't think of a game I've ever seen get a one from IGN. I'm sure it's happened but it's not common maybe if they added more water to this game ign would have given it a seven or something for more of 2023's worst games check out our reviews of the walking dead destinies or flat oh walking dead apparently that got a one back two and for everything else stick okay i i so i'm starting to see why it was panned as terrible as everyone said it was. In five years, there'll be a Netflix documentary on this game, like the E.T. video game. They're gonna dump all the copies and all the code, all the hard drives that have this game's code in like a landfill. And then in five years, we're gonna dig it back up. It's E.T. for the Atari all over again. Okay, so this is the official announcement trailer of what the game was supposed to be before it was released. Okay, already I can see an actual frame rate. This already looks better. Welcome to the short gameplay demonstration trailer for The Day Before, an upcoming open world multiplayer survival game. This got downgraded so hard for the final release. Look, okay, it actually looks like it runs consistently. There's lighting. The Day Before features a huge, stunningly detailed post-apocalyptic world destroyed by a terrible virus running out of fuel great man awesome we'll look around here i guess did we actually see them get in and out of cars in the full release early access whatever or was that scrapped This isn't actual gameplay. It was 
CGI animation. Okay. Wait, was this all pre-rendered? Render versus live game. So this actually isn't in in-game footage. Let's see what we have here. All right, all right, all right. I have found a great cowboy hat. Tell her everything's all right. It explains why it looks better. Like it's often you'll see a bit of a downgrade from like announcement trailer to final release when they have to adjust things to like make it consistent on consoles and stuff. But this is literally night and day. They passed off his gameplay knowing full well it wasn't. Great. Maybe I can sell my junk there and get myself a better rifle. Let's find some fuel and go. In the survivor colony, you can sell and buy any items as well as cooperate with other players. This is so deceptive. The day before, you can enter abandoned buildings and take whatever you want. What was it? The first Watch Dogs? There was such the flack about the trailer being be so much careful. better than the actual game. Not all players I remember fine. Watch Dogs, but I don't remember that, but I could see it. So I feel like Watch Dogs was a game that was disappointing when it came out. Get out of here. Okay, in this three seconds, we've already seen more enemies than we did in the entire actual release of this game. Got company. The things are about to get Man, heated. seeing this frame rate and this versus the actual game. I feel like if you do that grenade in the full release, the game would just crash from too much too much to render. So right there, there's actual loot to get. Dude, Clothes video. and weapons. Okay, I'm running toward you. The snowstorm is starting right About now. About watching and John? The is falling fast. Who's Remember John who? When you shoot and make unnecessary noise, it can attract unwanted guests even more Fuck. terrifying than other players. <laughs> The day before is teeming with hungry hordes of bloodthirsty infected ready to tear you ah, like pieces. more and more is making sense about all the things i have heard Whew, over the last close. week should have seen this shit. there wouldn't be anyone to throw a grenade at now fair he's enough crafting a bandage so he doesn't die from bleeding wait did we see crafting in the actual hey, game are you upstairs already actual resource management also from the last of us okay so this is actually cool Coming into a scene like this, this is actually cool. Oh, streamer John, uh, he streamed this one day for a couple hours. I popped in, he was exploring a big building when he went to throw nades when the servers were going down. The nades were falling through the floors. Once he went outside, they fell through the ground too. So you would throw grenades and they would just fall forever. Amazing. Psst, Incredible. Like this is actually cool. This little scene right here. Where was more of this? This gives me like cool zombie not sure what's going to be around the corner apocalypse vibes what the yeah there's the atmosphere there's there's soon. there's gameplay there's frame rate there's loot there's things to explore all of that was just taken out that's nuts. And then four days later, we had this on Twitter. Today, we announced the closure of Fantastic Studio. I'm assuming it's Fantastic Studio. Unfortunately, the day before has failed financially. It's been four days. And we lack the funds to continue. 
All income received is being used to pay off debts to our partners. We invested all our efforts, resources, and man hours into the development of the day before, which was our first huge gain. We really wanted to release new patches to reveal the full potential of the game, but unfortunately, we don't have the funding to continue the work. See, they knew all this before the game released. All of this stuff does not develop over a four day period right after you launch a game that you had been developing for five years. These were, this was not news. They knew. It's important to note that we didn't take any money from the public during the development of the day before. There were no pre-orders or crowdfunding campaigns. We worked tirelessly for five years, pouring our blood, sweat, and tears into the game. Well, where did they go? Because they didn't make it into the game. At the moment, the future of the day before and prop night is unknown, but the servers will remain operational. I believe the servers have since been shut down, right? Like, I don't even think that's true, that the servers will remain operational. I think they're gone. We apologize if we didn't meet your expectations. Just a little shy. Just a little shy. We did everything within our power, but unfortunately, we miscalculated our capabilities. Creating games is an incredibly challenging endeavor. I will, as a non-programmer, developer, whatever, I, I can at least agree to that, that creating games is challenging. I'll give them that. But it doesn't make an excuse for all this fiasco. We're grateful to everyone who supported us during these difficult years. It's been a fantastic journey over the past eight years. And those are all their games, including Prop Night, which I remember playing. I played Prop Night when it released. And on my very first day, there were hackers in my game. So even that, even Prop Night struggled. This is all extremely bad. Like, I've seen studios go under because a game they released didn't perform well. I think the Lord of the Rings Gollum game that came out this year that everyone was panning, I believe that studio went under sometime later. It doesn't happen within four days. The only way a studio shuts down after four days of releasing a five-year project is if you know in advance that you are going to be shutting down and you're keeping your mouth shut to try to get the last few pennies that you can before pulling the rug out from under people. Now, obviously there was massive, massive backlash to this, which led to, as the investor of the day before, we would like to provide some updates on the current situation around the game. We are sorry for the fact, uh, sorry. We are sorry for the fact that the game didn't meet the expectations of the majority of the players. Again, just a little shy. Today, we will work with Steam to open up refunds to any players who chose to make a refund. We're in contact with him and fantastic regarding the future of this game. There is no future of this game. The day before has come and gone. There is nothing. There's nothing, nothing. So there was this tweet when all this was coming out that says, unbelievable that you guys hyped this game up so much and that this is the end result. You guys are an absolute disgrace to the video game industry. To which fantastic replied, this was our first big experience. Shit happens. Shit happens. Yeah, we worked on a game for five years and we released it without telling you that we were actually shutting down in four days and all of the things that we promised weren't in the, in the game. Everything was stripped out of it and it runs like doo-doo butts. But hey, shit happens right i understand now why everyone was saying the day before was a giant scam let me know uh in the comments down below what you think of the day before and this whole scam and to anyone who might be upset about this hey shit happens thanks for watching